Hello and welcome to Clean Nuts and welcome to part two of a million views. This is celebrating a million views on the channel, to which I'm very, very grateful. And uh, it's the story of some of the cars I've had. So I thought I'd shorten the list of cars down and have the ones that I can remember the story. Um, otherwise it would just be a relentless list of here's an MG Midget, here's an MGB, here's a Spitfire, here's a Westfield. So these are all the story behind the cars and um, I hope you enjoy them. So this is my very first car, Triumph 1300 in powder blue, lasted 11 days before I smashed it. So I took the engine out of it, bought a red one with a blown engine, swapped the engine and carried on. So this is the first of the more interesting cars. 64B Triumph Spitfire that I had in 1978 and behind it is a Cheltenham water bucket if you're interested. But uh, the Spitfire was the 12 port head one, 1240 cc's, soon blew the engine with that and put an 8 port 1300 out of a Mark IV in it. Ford powered UVA fugitive, had a uh, 2 litre Pinto in it with trim 40s and it was a very wild experience driving this car on the public roads. It was a 750 Motor Club racer um, that was road registered. I took it to Santa Pod and let me tell you something, I didn't set any record times. It was like a 15, 16 quarter with a 15, 16 elapsed time. This car is a completely different story. It's one of those cars where you put it back in the garage and as you shut the garage door, you think to yourself, I got away with it. And there's a reason for that. Under the bonnet is a 5 litre V8 engine straight out of TBR Griffiths, fuel injected, so 300 horsepower, 700 kilograms, 12.5 quarter down at Santa Pod again, and it pulled so hard. Um, one time I accelerated away from a friend's house, engine cut out, I pulled the air filter and off the plenum chamber, just ripped it straight off uh, with the forced acceleration. What a brutal car. Big flames coming out of the exhaust as you change down at the thirds you hit the dual carriageway. An absolute rocket. Totally different experience in this car. This is one of those cars when you drive it on the street, you get people to let you out in a line of traffic and it's no, by all means, you first. That's the experience you get in a Morgan 44 CVH 1600 engine. Um, and interesting, look at the MAN plate on it. So this was bought, this was owned, reportedly owned, by Nigel Mansell's accountant who lived in the Isle of Man. And uh, so it had to be registered in the UK plate to drive it over here. Mark II Granada, a car I got very, very excited about, absolute minter, but didn't sell. It did in the end, but very disappointing. The only Woody I've ever owned, what a pretty thing. It's another, you go first please, sir. This one's a bit of an oddity, Beetle Wizard. So it's got a rear end made out of fiberglass, half kit car, half production car. 93 Mini, one of the last of the production run of that shape, had the original four cylinder Austin engine in it, which blew up, had it about a year. So new engine, had the car repainted. Bit of an air of rarity this one, Metro Turbo. Didn't even take it off the trailer. Went and bought it, advertised it, jet washed it, hadn't run for years. And it flew out the door, could have had 10 of them. The poor soul that bought this, I don't know why he bought it and what he did. He came down from Scotland, which is a good 400 miles from us. And um, had got it running, got it MOT, got it all roadworthy. And off he went into the darkness. And the next day I get a phone call. He's got halfway past the Scottish border and broken down. And that's the whole story of TVR and why they were, not TVR, TR7s. And why they're not successful as classic cars. Toyota Corolla, this is a signpost of the uh, emergence of the Japanese cars in the classic car market. Didn't even get it home, but I sold it en route. Someone just pulled me over at the side of the road and said, I'd like to buy that car if you're selling it. If you're selling it. So, never really got to drive it. He bought, he bought it as a project and just delivered it to him the next day. So, an interesting signpost of what the Japanese classic car market's doing. It's no S2000, but it's uh, a hot car. The Datsun 240Z, absolute icon, bought it at about 200 yards from where I live, had it repainted, sold it at auction in Buxton, at h and hs auction, and when I drove it, this car is like a 1973K, and when you drive a Datsun 240Z, it's in another league, 
to cars that we were producing at the time, like MGBs and Stags. It's an absolute dream to drive. Thoroughly recommend them. This from memories of Mark II Land Rover. It's got this all roadworthy on the uh, MOT and ready to use. And a man comes over, flies over from France and tries to drive it back. Let me tell you, that is a very agricultural car to drive. And goodness knows how he got on. This car has to qualify as the ugliest car ever built by someone in their garage. Uh, underpinning was a, a Citroen 2CV and it, frankly it's embarrassing to drive. Silver Striker 1400 um, K-series Rover engine with its known head gasket faults. Bought it with the engine out, needed a clutch, put it all back together. Uh, and I have to say, even though it was only 1400 Drove really sweet, nice car. Okay, guilty as charged. I learned to drive in one of these when I was 17. My mother had one. She bought it brand new in 1974. This one went off to be an advertising hoarding. Um, so these guys turned up and just lifted it up by hand and put it in the back of a lorry. I've had a lot of MGB GTs. And this one was a very beautiful one. I put a full leather interior in it, magnolia piped blue. And good car. A40 Farina, bought by a young lad getting into classic cars, thought it was super cool, and it is, it's a designer built car. Another one of those beautifully ugly cars. Look at the leopard, leopard sprint seats. What on earth was I doing buying this? I just, I, I, I don't know, I cannot imagine why I bought it. To take it, to take it to the MOT station, it was embarrassing. It really was. The time and effort someone was putting to build it. There you go. The Austin Marina 1300. Again, bought by a youngster uh, who found favour in a classic car and thought it was beautiful. The Triumph Vitesse 1600. Again, bought by a youngster who was getting into classic cars. Uh, its insurance was very reasonable on the 1600cc engine and off he went into the sunset. Very nice car. MG Midget, I've had a lot of these. This one's notable for the round rear arch. 4.2 Daimler Sovereign, hadn't run for 10 years, drove it out of a garage, put it in the workshop, hooked up three batteries to it, filled the balls with oil, took the plugs out, got it to turn over, and the, when it started, we put the plugs back in, when it started, the smoke filled the room. It was hilarious. MGA Project Car, Pretty car when done, never have never driven one. The famous and beautiful Rover V8 P6. Never took it off the trailer. Let me tell you something. That is, for a car with aluminium body panels, it's unbelievably heavy. Sold it to a man in um, Derbyshire who built spotlights. You know, uh, the spotlight you'd have on a maritime vessel on a, on a ship. And he made them into lamps that you could have in your house. Quite a craftsman. Two litre Crusader Capri. What a find. It took me about a year to buy this car. Kept pestering the guy until he sold it to me. And I sold it to a man who turned up with his daughter. And they bought it for their... They were getting, the daughter was getting married. And they bought it as a wedding present for the, for the man she was marrying. So what a lovely story. Classic cars can touch your life in a lot of different ways. And... I was very proud to say it to them. It's a lovely, lovely car. I bought a lot of these projects that people have got bundled up in their garage. They're never going to finish them and they just need to sell them. And I was buying them, repackaging them and delivering them to the man with the new dream and the new enthusiasm. So they're a bit of a merry-go-round project cars like this. Now, I genuinely felt sorry for the man I bought this car from. He'd taken it all apart, had it all painted, was just putting it all back together and the paint reacted all over the car. So it was all cracking and it was reacting with the, the paint beneath it. And he had just, it just broke him. Um, he'd lost all the enthusiasm and, and just take it away, get rid of it. I don't want to see it anymore. Sad story, but a nice car. Just needed a new paint. The modern Lotus Elan with the Isuzu engine in it. This car was being sold as a non-runner. So I go to look at it, have a good look round, and see, see, and I see the inertia switch has popped up. It's hidden behind the, the, the hood. 
in the little well behind the seats. So bought it as a non-runner, went outside, pushed the inertia switch in, started it crisply first turn and drove off. And I still feel guilty about it years later. Now the most interesting thing about this car, apart from the Seabury body kit that it had on, is who I sold it to. I sold it to a pilot who flies um, Avro Lancasters in the British Memorial Fleet. And he's got more time in Lancasters, more, more hours, than any of the pilots that fought in the war. Because the poor souls that fought in the war probably died. The ones that did the longest, uh, longest service and flying hours. So a sad story, but a nice story. MGB LE, what a massive spec car, 15 inch mirror lights, elliptical springs, full leather upholstery and hydraulic power steering, the only MGB I've ever driven with power steering. Took a, lot, took a long time to sell, but we sold it to a really enthusiast who was going to show it, so hope you hope enjoyed it. Here I am at the helm of the Frog, sporting trials car, powered by a Honda, little Honda 1100, 1200 engine. And uh, my companion there, when, he, when we finished our lap of the field, he smiled with all the green sheet muck that had been flicked up by the, by the uh, wheels all over his face. What a bit of fun. Take a look at the back of this car. See those wings, they're extended. It's the Mark II with the long rear wings and arguably the prettiest Sunbeam Alpine that they made. And what a lovely car that was. Really did. I had a, when I sold that, a little bit of my heart went off with the car. Another beautiful car. This is a recreation of an MGTF. And I sold this to a very interesting guy called Ron Champion. The man that invented and designed and built with the students of a school that he worked at, the Low Cost. Which is like a Westfield, like a Lotus 7. Built reportedly for £250, all in, including the donor car. A nice guy, interesting uh, motoring man who knew an engineer. And I bought from him the 944S, arguably one of the best chassis of that car of that era. Quite a rarity, this thing, the um, Austin Healey GT with the Lotus 907 cranked over double overhead cam engine, notably unreliable. Um, so the first thing you do is change the cam bill, which this size, you can see, look at the dust on it, been laid up for years. And I sold, got it all prepared, got it ready for the road again, and sold it to one of the earlier owners of the car. He saw it for sale, had such a love affair with it at the time, had to buy it back and enjoy it all over again, and good for him. Sourced locally to where I live, this is the Holy Grail. It's one of the, it's one of the, the original one owner car, comes with the original bill of sale, the sales invoice when they bought it, the order form, and this nice couple living locally to me had kept it for something like 25 years from brand new and, they'd, and then they were just too old to drive it. So lovely, lovely car and a real rarity and a real pleasure to find. Bit of an upgrade from the last car, GT6, so 1969 Mark II with the low front bumper. What a lovely car they are. The poor man's E-Type with that smooth six cylinder engine up front. Tiny little car by today's standards, but very sweet and I think very pretty. Right up there into one of the prettiest cars I've ever bought with that beautiful, you can't see it in this shot, the rear screen that curves around, the TVR 3000M, three litre V6 Essex engine up front. Now interestingly, I sold this to the retired parts manager of TVR in Blackpool where they were based and built. And he wanted a car to go into his retirement with and rebuild. And good luck to him. I hope he enjoyed it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that roundup of all the cars uh, that I could remember the story behind. And there's a couple of videos coming up. Part three of a million views. My top five cars. And I've kept those out of this selection in the main. And uh, then there's a part four, which will be the top five bikes. So I hope you enjoy what I'm doing with this channel. Um, I do get a little bit distracted at times with watches and things. But it's just for fun. And keep tuned, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.